Very well. Now that we have our app connected to the data source, let's start building the real screens. Let's take a look at our planning and see what are the screens that we are going to build. Back here at the drafts, we have these four screens and the first one is the loading screen for when the user just opens the app. It will show this screen and then automatically navigate to this initial screen. So let's start in building this one. Going back to our, our app, we have this table we could delete because you're not going to use anymore, but let's keep in here just in case we want to look at it and see what's the data so far. Since we are keeping in here, let's create a new screen to be the loading screen. Let's go here to the three view and go to new screen. Here we can click create a blank screen, but we also have templates. We have several templates here that we could use but we are going to start from scratch using the blank one. I'm going to click here on blank and wait for the app to add this second screen. Once the screen is added, let's already rename it as a good practice. So instead of screen two, let's just rename by double clicking on it or even selecting the screen and here in the right pane, change the name to loading screen. Okay, now let's start adding elements to this screen. Look at our draft, we have a logo, a title and a loading element. In order to add the logo, we need to insert a media to the app. So I'm going to click here on media and click on upload. Once I click here, it, is, it will show a pop-up on my screen where I can select the logo. Since I'm not sharing the whole screen, you won't see, but it's, very, it's a very simple process. I clicked in there, it's showing the pop-up, I will find the image you want and double click on it. And just select to load to the app. Now I selected and I loaded my logo, the same one that's here in this mockup screen. I will put the same image in the class resources in case you want to use it. But if you want to use yours, you can just upload a different image. The name for my image is rudimar underscore power apps underscore logo dot png. If I click on it, it will place the image right here in the middle of the, the screen in my canvas. And I can resize it and place here in the very top as it's showing in your example. Now let's add the app title. In order to add it, let's just insert a label. Let's go to insert and select text label. Once I click, the label will be placed in the app. I can just move it and put here in the middle and do the configurations I need. For example, we can change the font size to 35. We can align the text to the center, weight of the font to bold, and also, of course, changing the text. In this case, it will be called Power Compacts. That's the name of the app. You can also resize the width if you want the text to have two lines. So it stays like this. And now let's add the loading here. For the loading, we could upload a GIF here in the media with the loading element. You can find several loading GIFs in the internet. But there is one element here in Power Apps that we can use. It's still in preview. That means it's not intended for a real app that goes to production, but we can use here to learn and to see how to insert these elements. When we go here on insert, we cannot find right now. It depends on what, what day is today uh, because I'm recording this just after it was released, but in the future, it may be here already. But right now, in order to enable, we are going to go to the settings. So we can click here in the settings in the bottom. Go to upcoming features, preview. And there is one place here where we can enable those elements. Let me find, here it is, try out the modern controls. If I toggle it to on, then we will have some extra controls to use inside Power Apps. Let's close this pop-up. Now in the insert button, we have this modern tab 
where we have a couple of elements here. They are in the very beginning yet. They were just launched. There are lots to improve, but here is how you can enable and use it. I bet in the future they are going to be very important, so it's good to know. Here we have one of them that's called Spinner. If I click on it, the Spinner will show here in the screen. Here I will just drag to the bottom and change some configurations. Look, we can add a label. So the label here is weight, or we can put loading data, for example. We can configure the appearance, we can change the colors, there are no much configurations at this point. We can change the position to be below the spinner, the position of the text, and change the spinner size to huge, although it's not very huge, but okay, that, that's the biggest we can get. And then just position it and it will do this loading effect once the app is played, see? Now we have this loading screen, very easy to create and gives this effect where the user just waits the app to load the data and he sees, he or she sees that something is happening. Later in the course, we are going to see how to make this screen be the first screen of the app and then automatically go to the home screen after a couple of seconds. In the next video, we are going to see how to create the second screen, that's the home screen. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.